Hey everyone, and welcome back to What If Goten Was Born Early. This is part 3. I'll leave the links to the previous parts in the description and the cards as always. Just before we begin, I'd like to remind all of you to subscribe and ring the bell if you really enjoy what I do here. It really does help me out. I'd also like to let you all know that I'm now on Patreon. If you guys feel like supporting me, you can do so there. The link will be in the description. Thank you very much. So, to recap. Goten was born in February, age 762, making him just under 5 years younger than Gohan. Upon meeting him, Goten idolised the Trunks from the future, thinking he was really strong and cool. Goten joined in with the 3 years of training and came on leaps and bounds. When Goku and Gohan emerged from the Room of Spirit and Time, it was Goten's turn to enter with Piccolo. Goten reached Grade 4, or Full Power Super Saiyan, by the age of 6, leaving his father in awe. Goten handled himself well at the Cell games, but after Goku's sacrifice, Cell's return, and Trunks' subsequent death, something inside Goten snapped. He exploded into Super Saiyan 2 and joined his brother on the battlefield. With some encouragement from their father and a well-timed distraction by Vegeta, the brothers obliterate Cell, leaving the world at peace. During the next seven years, Goten took it upon himself to train Trunks, forming a solid friendship with the boy, who saw him as an older brother. But once Gohan gets his energy drained at the tournament, Goten and the others chase down Babidi. Goten kills Dabra while Gohan kills Babidi. The result is a much more docile Boo, who embraces the kindness of Goten and the others until his pet dog is shot. Now evil Boo squares up to our innocent Boo, and that's where we'll pick up our story today. As in the original, evil Boo utterly dominates his innocent counterpart. Vegeta has sensed this energy and is speeding towards Boo's house at top speed. With Goku back in the afterlife and Gohan and Goten training with Shin, he's the only one left who could actually do something to help. Now, I actually left a poll for this one, and this scenario that I'm going with today was the clear winner. Vegeta arrives in the nick of time with a Super Saiyan 2 kick to the cheek. Evil Boo is sent careening into a mountain. Vegeta grabs Majin Buu and takes off for the lookout. Once there, Vegeta asks if Dende or Piccolo can get in touch with Gohan and Goten. Piccolo has telepathy, but it can't reach the world of the Kais. And that's when Kaio butts in. He says that telepathy is his specialty, and he'll get in touch with Goku, who is currently with his sons on the world of the Kais. Meanwhile, Gohan has had his potential unlocked for some time now, while Goten has decided against it. He has seen his father turn into a Super Saiyan 3, and been told about his power drain on a mortal body. And because of this, Goten has decided it would be much better to master the Super Saiyan 2 form, and as such, he's been exclusively training with that. Because of this, Shin has also made Goten an attendant. This means that Goten, whether he's aware of it yet or not, can use the healing ability that Trunks uses in the Dragon Ball Super manga. Suddenly, Kaio interrupts the father and son sparring match, informing the family of what's happened. It appears that the Elder Kai has taken his eyes off Earth for too long because he'd fallen asleep. The Elder Kai tells everyone that while the two halves of Boo are no longer as powerful as they were before, the evil half took more of the energy, making him just as dangerous. This Boo is pure evil, and Gohan and Goten have to put him down by any means necessary. Elder Kai hands his Patara earrings to Gohan and Goten, explaining how they work and telling them to only use them as a last resort. Gohan and Goten thank the Elder Kai and ask Shin to be on their way. Within seconds, Shin, Gohan and Goten appear next to Vegeta on the lookout. The brothers are relieved to see that Innocent Boo is unharmed and thank Vegeta, who scoffs. It's not like he did it for them. He's still struggling with the reality of what he had let Bobbidi do to him. He was just trying to atone, in any way that he could, and if that meant saving this fat blob from himself, then so be it. Moments later, Piccolo exclaims in horror. Evil Boo has found them on the lookout. He instantly charges towards Innocent Boo in an effort to absorb him, but Vegeta stands in his way. He's going first. It's his fault that Boo was released in the first place, so he will be the one to fix it. Now, the gang already know about Boo's healing ability, but during the course of the fight, Vegeta realises that he can regenerate even from small pieces. While good Boo is missing from his makeup, this evil Boo should still be stronger than, or at least at a similar level, to the pure kid Boo. This is still more than half of Super Boo's power, after all. 
Boo overwhelms Vegeta, forcing Goten to step in. Goten knows that regular Super Saiyan 2 isn't enough, so he powers up to his maximum. Vegeta is shocked at Goten's power. It's above even himself and Kakarot, or at least to his knowledge. I wouldn't say he's a close level to Super Saiyan 3 just yet, but he's certainly getting there. He has been sparring with his father on the world of the Kais for a while now, after all. Goten manages to wear Evil Boo down, but ultimately can't defeat him alone. With a heavy sigh and a cocky smirk on his face, Gohan dismantles Evil Boo. Gohan backs him into a corner, and in a moment of desperation, Evil Boo launches a candy beam at Innocent Boo. Seeing this happen, Vegeta launches himself in front of the beam, turning into a Vegeta-shaped chocolate. Gohan, now horrified and angry, launches a Kamehameha at Evil Boo and destroys him in an instant. Every piece of Boo is obliterated and the threat is over. However, Vegeta doesn't turn back to normal. Innocent Boo, after being healed by Dende, uses his beam to return Vegeta back to normal. After all of this, Bulma throws a celebration at Capsule Corp, inviting everyone. Videl and Mr. Satan attend, and this is where he's introduced properly to the group. While he's initially terrified of them, he ends up learning that Gohan is the little boy who defeated Cell all those years ago. Gohan assures him that he's not going to tell anyone, and Mr. Satan is beyond ecstatic. The world keeps turning without anyone ever learning of the almost terror of Majin Buu. Four years pass with only one incident involving Vegeta's brother Tarbal. He came to Earth to ask his brother for help against two remnants of the Freezer Force who are now as strong as the Tyrant himself. This story goes about the same way as the original special, only this time Vegeta gets the win and Gotenks and Goku are not present. And now Bulma's birthday party is fast approaching. While elsewhere, a certain feline is stirring from his 30 year slumber. And that's where we'll end things for now. So what do you guys think? Will Goku come back to life this time around? Will Beerus get his wish of fighting the Super Saiyan God? Tune into the next part to find out. I am aware that everyone wants to see what if Kid Goku turns Super Saiyan Part 11, so I will be tackling that one next. It won't be long now, that's a promise. In regards to that video though, I've left a poll on my channel, which I'll link in the description. Also, I'll be tackling What If Vegeta Died in the Saiyan Saga Part 2, the GT edition, once we hit 800 subscribers. With all that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this What If. If you did, please consider subscribing and dropping me a like. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.